I find this a little bit hard to believe, but it's over six years ago now since I reviewed the original Nixie watch from Cathode Corner. Now that video over the years has had plenty of views and they've also sold plenty of Nixie watches. Mine's still working fine and it's one of over a thousand that are out there. By far the most famous customer though is Steve Wozniak, the co-founder of Apple. A Woz can very rarely be seen out in public without his Nixie watch on his wrist. In fact, the two have become so connected with one another that people tend to call it the Woz watch. And there's a whole scene in the 2015 Steve Jobs movie devoted to the Steve Wozniak character demonstrating his Nixie watch to Steve Jobs, even though in the film this occurs approximately 20 years before the watch actually came out. Now the real man behind the watch, which is David Forbes from Cathode Corner, has been kind enough to send me over a pre-production version of the new model, and he likes to call this one the Square Nixie watch. But before I go into details about the watch itself, let's just talk about Nixie tubes for a minute. They're a technology that was from the 1950s and quite popular in the 1960s, but of course over time they got phased out and other displays came in like LEDs, vacuum fluorescent displays and ultimately LCDs, but none of those hold the same attraction as the good old Nixie tube. Perhaps it's down to the numbers being held in individual glass tubes or the nice orange glow that you get from them, the organic numbers that are bent pieces of metal rather than segmented displays, or perhaps it's the fact that the numbers appear in front of one another so that when you look at a Nixie tube display from the front, all the numbers tend to be a little bit uneven. Nixie tubes are often seen in movies, TV shows and games whenever the director wants an interesting way to display digits. A feeling that you wouldn't get if you just showed an LED or an LCD. They kind of give a retro, future, steampunk, alternate reality type aesthetic to things. In recent years, you can't fail to have noticed the increasing popularity of these vintage light bulbs, and I can't help but think that the appearances of Nixie tubes in popular culture haven't had some sort of influence on that. Now, I'm a big fan, as you can imagine, of Nixie tubes, and in my lounge, I've got a Nixie tube clock underneath the television. It's been there for over 10 years displaying the time. There's no way I'd replace it with a normal LED clock though. I think those are just tacky, but for some reason a Nixie tube adds an air of class to a digital display. Now in the movie Steve Jobs was uncomplimentary should we say about the Nixie watch but in reality I think the Apple designers like Nixie tubes as much as anyone else because they even put a little Nixie tube type display on the old iPod Nano. So coming back to the square Nixie watch as you can see it's quite a chunky watch but it's also about as thin as you could possibly make one of these while still incorporating the depth of a Nixie tube inside the case. As you can see, this one has two tubes inside it, and I'll show you how those display the time in a little bit. And these are some of the smallest tubes that you could possibly get. So it's about as small as you could possibly make a Nixie watch. Now, compared to the original round Nixie watch, because it's quite a bit thinner there, they've shaved quite a few millimetres off this, which means it'll fit under the sleeve of a shirt. Now, the original one had a little bit of trouble sliding underneath there. And despite both watches using the same size tubes, the face on the new one is quite a bit more compact than the original model. Now, to change the time settings on the original one, you had to unscrew the top of the case to enable you to get to the two buttons that were inside the bottom there. On the new Square Nixie watch, those buttons have been more conveniently located to the outside of the case in a traditional way. Now, I'll show you how you go about changing the time on this watch. So, first off, press the bottom button. That gets into the 12 or 24 hour choice. So, you choose which one of those you prefer. Next one along gets into hours. So, you can adjust that by pressing the top button and then minutes. And then finally, seconds. We can reset those to zero by pressing that top button as well. And then there's one more setting, and that's the angle at which the watch is activated. It shows 45 on the screen, and that's indicating that's the angle setting mode. So you choose the angle you want, press the top button. So every time the watch gets to that angle again now, it's going to display the time. And that's how you show the time. So you flick your wrist up, and when you get it to the right angle, it shows the time. 14.08 and 22 seconds. Notice how it displays the digits one after the other. So 14.08 and 27 seconds. Now it takes considerably more power to display a digit on a Nixie tube than it would on an LCD display, so to avoid any danger of you prematurely running the battery down, the watch has a bit of a built-in failsafe. You see, when you tilt the watch, you get the hours, then the minutes, but if you tilt it and hold it, you get the hours, the minutes, and then the seconds. 
Now, if, for example, you were to leave the watch on the side and it was still showing the digits because you'd left it at that angle, it wouldn't carry on showing them forever until the battery wears down. Now, after it showed the digits for perhaps 20 seconds or so, you can see that they show less and less on the watch until eventually they fade away and that's just there to protect the battery. Talking of batteries of course the original one had this big battery at the side which meant the digits were shifted off to the left. In comparison the new Square Nixie watch is rechargeable so it can do away with that large battery and then shift those two Nixie tubes front and centre and reduce the overall size of the watch. Now you can tell when the watch needs recharging because the minutes will flash twice like they're doing here. Now this will only happen every few weeks, but when it does, all you need to do is recharge the battery using a standard micro USB lead. The watch strap is a standard size, it's 22mm and leather, so you could swap that out for any other design that you preferred. The back of the watch will be individually numbered when these go on sale, and the watch itself is water resistant. It's not waterproof, don't go underwater with it, but it's got a water resistant USB port, and it's got a rubber seal around the inside here to stop any sweat or rain getting in and things. You can see the LiPo battery on the left there can be unplugged and replaced when it gets to the end of its life. And you can also see that everything in here is really packed in. I can't imagine how you could make a smaller Nixie tube watch than this one. Now, whilst these are some of the smallest Nixie tubes made, there are still a relatively decent supply of these around. And as you can see, they just plug in at the bottom there. So if you were to break one, you could quite easily replace it. Now, if you want to know more about this Nixie watch, or if you even want to buy one, there's only one place to go, and it's cathodecorner.com. As you can see, it's going to be available in a number of different colours. It's going to be a very limited edition watch and very exclusive as well, given the fact that the price is $795 plus postage. But even at those prices, I'm sure that there are more than enough well-heeled geeks in the world to ensure that the demand for this watch will outstrip the supply. But it's been a great privilege to be able to show this watch here to you today, when I know that there's only a few people in the world who have got one. There's David at Cathode Corner, there's myself, and one of the first people to get one of the first watches off the production line was, of course, was himself. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. How much? Well, I won't be buying one of those. I'd better tell everybody about my purchasing decision. I don't understand. Why do you feel the need to tell people what you're not going to buy? For example, when I'm out shopping, I don't go in all the shops I'm not going to buy anything from to tell them why I'm not going to buy it. I'll be there all day. I mean, you're not going to buy a Ferrari, are you? But you don't tell anyone about that. That's a very good point. Oh, me and my big mouth.